Hi students, uh, today we are going to be discuss about the uh, renal diseases, which means the renal disorders and if there is a diseases, so what can you have to do, there is an artificial kidney or kidney transplant, okay. So first of all we have to know about the disorders, so what is the kidney diseases, actually the diseases of the kidney are among the most important cause of the death and disability in many countries throughout the world. I hope you know about that one so if the person will be affected by the diabetes mitters and in this condition so immediately uh, is going to be a failure of the renal system also okay so uh, by this way there is a, a more renal uh, failure uh, for example I have to tell about this in 2004 I think so uh, more than 20 millions of adults years were be estimated to have a chronic kidney diseases uh, these are articles that came to the, the, some of the uh, medical journal also and now we have to know about this one so what is the severe kidney diseases so we have to be uh, divided into two part or two categories so there is a one is acute renal failure and as a chronic renal failure so that you are going to see the further slides a little bit deeply as well as briefly and first of all we have to know so what how the renal disorder will be occur so how can we have to be know there is a, a renal disorders so for that purpose we are have to know about this one there are many specific kidney diseases that can affect the kidney blood vessels glomeruli tubules and renal interstitium and parts of the body of uh, urinary tract outside the kidney including the ureters and bladders okay so how can it happen so by the deterioration of the renal function resulting in decline in filtration rate and rise in urea and non nitrogenous substances so by this way there is a we are going to segregate the two part one is a acute renal failure and one is a chronic renal failure so then we have to know about this, what is the acute renal failure and first of all you have to know there is a, a renal failure sudden decline in the glomerular filtration rate over a period of the days to a weak association with the rapid rise blood urea so that is a acute a renal failure okay and then it is going to just divide the three a main categories so there is a pre renal cause which means a acute uh, is a pre renal acute renal failure okay and intra renal acute renal failure otherwise uh, called the intra renal causes and post renal acute renal failure okay let me go to see this one by one uh, what is a pre renal acute renal failure so here actually um, the acute renal failure is setting up from the decrease in the blood supply to the kidney this condition is uh, often referred to as a renal acute renal failure and it will be reflected the fact of the abnormality occurs in the systems uh, before the kidney this can be as a consequence of the heart failure with reduced cardiac output and low blood pressure or condition association with the diminished blood volume and low blood pressure such as a severe hemorrhage okay so that's why that's why i have just mentioned the causes here due to the decrease in the blood volume decreased uh, due to decrease in the cardiac output due to uh, peripheral vasodilation and due to primary renal hemodynamics abnormalities so what will happen due to decreased volume so hemorrhage and burn cases so in the decreased cardiac output occur in the cardiac failure uh, due to the myocardial infraction or valve diseases and the peripheral vasodilation uh, like is anaphylactic shock sepsis and severe infections so the renal artery stenosis and thrombosis and renal arteries or veins is comes under the hemodynamic abnormalities so whenever there is a condition is used to call so there is a comes under the pre renal acute renal failure so next we have to know about this a pathological conditions the pathology of the pre renal failure when there is a decrease in the renal blood flow by the above the causes which we have seen the causes previously so decrease the glomeration glomerular filtration rate and what will happen is going to be decrease in the urinary output of water and solutes if there is going to be decrease because we have a normal of value about this one for the due is going to be decrease in the 
below to the normal or is be decreased below to so 500 ml per day is considered so oliguria and if there is anuria so when bed flow is reduced to below to the basal requirement so if there be reduced what happened so there's a renal cells becomes hypoxic if there be hypoxic what happened the renal cells will death and finally the renal is going to be failure and next we are going to see about is intra or renal acute renal failure so what is the intra renal acute renal failure resulting from the abnormalities within the kidneys so we see this is a pre renal that is going to be happened by the blood pressures or cardiac output like that okay but if this is happened within the kidney itself including those that affect the blood vessels glomeruli and tubules okay so now we have to know about the, what are the causes so condition that injure the glomerular capillaries occurs in the acute glomerular nephritis or vasculitis malignant hypertension and due to the tubular epithelial injury acute tubular necrosis due to the ischemia due to toxins and due to the renal interstitial injury acute renal nephritis and this type of this uh, classifications refer to the primary sites of injury but because the renal vasculature and tubular system are functionally uh, interdependent or damage to the renal blood vessels can lead to the tubular damage and primary tubular damage can lead to damage of the renal blood vessels uh, causes the intra renal acute renal failure okay so next we are going to uh, see about that one uh what is the next yes it's an acute glomerulonephritis now we have to know about this one uh, what is the acute renal failure caused by the glomerulonephritis acute glomerulonephritis is a type of intra renal acute renal failure actually it uh, is caused by the abnormal immune reaction that damages the glomeruli around 95 percentage of the patient uh with this disease damage to the glomerulus occurs as one to three weeks after the infection elsewhere in the body usually caused by the certain type of group a uh beta streptococci the infection may have been as a streptococcal sore throat streptococcal uh tonsillitis or uh, even a streptococcal infections of the skin so it is not the infection itself the damage the kidney instead of over the few weeks and antibodies develop against the streptococcal antigen the antibodies and antigen react with the each other to form the insoluble immune complex that becomes so entrapped in the glomeruli and especially in the basement membrane portion of the glomeruli uh, once the immune complex has been deposited in the glomeruli so what will happen so many of the cells of the glomeruli begins to proliferate it means it's multiplied and mainly the messenger cell that will lie between the endothelium and the epithelium okay that's how this begin here uh, but easy to understand is begin with the infection or uh, by the group a streptococcal infection one to two three weeks formation of the antibodies against the streptococcal antigen and insoluble is going to be aglutinogen is going to be complexes trapped in the glomeruli and once it is deposited many of the cells is going to messenger proliferated and followed by that many of the glomeruli become blocked uh, once it's going to be unblocked glomeruli becomes excessively permeable allow to proteins of rbc to the leak through them and then finally the renal shutdown due to the blockage of the glomeruli the acute inflammation of the glomeruli usually uh, substances into two weeks most patients or kidney return as almost normal function within the next few weeks or few months sometimes however many of the glomeruli are destroyed so what will happen beyond the repair and in small percentage of patients will be progressive and renal deterioration continues indefinitely leading to chronic renal failure and next is the tubular necrosis as a cause of the acute renal failure actually this is another cause of the intra renal acute renal failure this is the tubular necrosis so uh, in the tubular necrosis 
actually uh, severe ischemia and and inadequate supply of the oxygen and nutrition to the tubular epithelial cells and poison toxins or medication that destroy the tubular epithelial cells okay now we are going to know about this what is the acute tubular necrosis so now we have to know there is a acute tubular necrosis caused by the several severe renal ischemia and again it is caused by the toxins or medications okay uh, in circulatory shock or other it causes a severely impaired blood supply and this goes to the severe ischemia the severe ischemia of the kidney that can result from the circulatory shock or any other disturbance I hope you already know about that one. So, if this ischemia is severe, so what will happen is enough to seriously impact to deliver the nutrition and oxygen supply. Okay. So, when this happens in the tubular cells, it's a slug off and plug many of the nephron. So, there is a no urine output from the blocked nephrons. The affected nephron often fail to excrete the urine even when the renal blood flow is being restored to a normal. I understood so the most common cause is ischemic damage to the tubular epithelium or the pre renal causes of the acute renal failure associated with the circulatory shock so finally what happened and no urine output from the block nephron and sudden renal shutdown so the same thing is going to happen in the acute tubular necrosis caused by the toxins as or medications okay uh, there is a, a long list of the renal poison and medication that can damage the tubular epithelium and cause the renal acute renal failure okay uh, so some of these are carbon tetrachloride heavy metals like as a mercury lead ethylene, ethylene glycol so these are the compounds going to be as a uh, even the various insecticides, or various medications such as the tetracycline used as the antibiotics. So, what will happen? So, here is the epithelial cells slug away from the basement membrane and plug the tubules. In some instances, the basement membrane also is be destroyed. If the basement membrane is be remain intact, the new blood epithelial cells can grow along the surface of the membrane so that the T will repair itself within the 10 to 20 days so if it will be failed to repair so what will happen so it will be the destruction of the tubular cells and slug of these cells plug the many of the nephron and finally what will happen the no urine output from the blocked nephron and sudden renal shutdown will be present and followed by the suppose a renal acute renal failure so here uh, when the kidney blood supply and other function are initially normal if the urine output of only one kidney is diminished so no major change in body fluid composition will occur because the contralateral kidney can increase its urine output sufficient to maintain the relatively normal levels of the excessive blood electrolytes and solutes as well as the normal excessive blood fluid volume so with these types uh, the renal failure normal kidney functions can be restored if this basic cause of the problem is correct within the few hours but if there is a chronic obstruction of the urinary tract this is lasting for uh, several days or weeks can lead to irreversible kidney damage and some of the causes i think uh, yeah some of the causes post a renal acute failure include like as a bilateral obstructions uh, of the ureters or renal pelvicus causes with the large stones or blood clots and uh, bladder obstruction and obstruction of the ureter so here so what will happen so bilateral obstruction of the ureters renal pelvis causes with the large stones bladder obstruction or obstruction of the ureter so ultimately what will happen is block the urine outflow sudden renal shutdown so but the kidney blood supply and other function also normal so now we have to know about the physiological effect of the acute renal failure the major physiological effect of the acute renal failure is the retention of the blood and excess of fluid of water and on waste products of metabolism and electrolytes 
Uh, this can lead to uh, water and salt overload which in turn can lead to edema and hypertension. Excessive retention of potassium is, however, is often a more serious uh, threat to the patient with acute renal failure uh, because uh, increases in the plasma potassium concentration to more than uh, 8 mL equal per liter can be as a factor because the kidney are also unable to excrete the sufficient hydrogen ions patient with acute renal failure developed to metabolic acidosis which is uh, it itself can be a lethal or can aggravate the hyperkalemia. So next uh, we seen this one the acute renal failure. Next we are going to be uh, move towards the chronic uh, renal failure. Uh, chronic renal failure arises causes an irreversible decrease in the number of functional nephrons. Actually, uh, progressive and irreversible loss of a large number of functioning in the nephron, serious clinical symptoms often do not occur until the number of functional nephron falls to at least 70 to 75 percentage below the normal. In fact, uh, relatively normal blood concentration of the most electrolytes, a normal body fluids volume can still be maintained until the number of functioning nephron decreases below. 20 to 25 percentage of normal. So now we have to see about what are the causes. Uh, it is a disorders of the renal blood vessels. If there is any atherosclerosis or fibromuscular dysplasia of large arteries, uh, nephrosclerosis of small arteries, and disorders in the glomeruli in the glomerular areas, like as a chronic nephrolytic glomerular nephritis. And if there is any defects which is present in the tubules and renal interstitium, uh, like uh, nephrotoxins, infection like as a phylonephritis and tuberculosis, and urinary tract infection, renal calculi, uh, hypertrophy of prostate and urethral constrictions. So, in this condition, there is a chronic renal failure will occur. So, what are the disorders of the renal vessels? We are going to see one by one. Actually, there are many types of the vascular lesion can lead to the renal ischemia and death of the kidney tissues. The most common of these one is the atherosclerosis. So, I told about this one as a larger renal arteries with progressive sclerotic constriction of the vessels and fibromuscular hyperplasia or the one or the one or more of the large arteries and nephrosclerosis, which I have just mentioned here as a affect the small arteries which means uh, the sclerotic lesion of the small arteries or arterioles and glomeruli. Nephrosclerosis after the affect, sorry, affect the smaller arteries actually the benign nephrosclerosis the most common form of the kidney diseases is seen in the at least uh, one some extent in about the 70% of the post-mortem examination in the people who died after the age of 60. This type of vascular lesion occurs in the smaller interlobular arteries and in the afferent arterioles to of the kidney. It is believed to begin the uh, leakage of the plasma. Leakage of the plasma through the intimal layer and fibroid deposit in the chinica media. So, this caused by fibronite deposit of the develop in the medial layer of the vessels and followed with the progressive thickening of the vessels wall. You eventually uh, constrict the vessels in some cases occurs. Them. And finally, what happens the progressive with thickening of vessels wall and constriction and um, occlusion of vessels. And followed by that to destruction of the nephron supplies of these arteries and kidney tissue replaced by small amount of the fibrous tissue so what happened finally the chronic renal failure occur and if glomerular capillaries are affected called as a glomerosclerosis. Uh, nephrosclerosis and glomerosclerosis occur to some extent in most of the people after the uh, fourth decade of the life causing about the 10 percentage decrease in the number of functional nephron each 10 years after age 40. 
The loss of glomeruli and overall nephron function is reflected by progressive decrease in both the uh, renal blood flow and uh, glomerular filtration rate. Uh, even in normal people, kidney plasma blood flow, a uh, plasma flow and GFR decreases by uh, 40 to 50 percent at the age of 80. Okay. Next, we are going to know about the phylonephritis. Uh, but I think uh, that is, that is the primary or secondary diseases of the renal interstitium is referred to as a interstitial nephritis. And the renal interstitial injury caused by the bacterial infection is called as a phylonephritis. The infection can result from the different types of the bacteria, uh, but especially from the accessory coli, E. coli. I hope you know about the, from the high school itself as the E. coli that originates the fecal contaminations of the urinary tract. This bacteria reaches the kidney either by the way of the bloodstream or more commonly by the accession of the, from the lower urinary tract by way of the ureter of the kidney also. So the infection reaches the kidney, lower urinary tract, bloodstream, bacterial infection urinary tract occurs when there be inability of the bladder to empty the urine or any obstruction in the lower urinary tract. So what happened? So it is going to be accumulation of the urine in the bladder. So once going to be accumulated the urine in the bladder, so the bacteria will grow very easily. So that is a common sense we have to use to do. No, but the general bacteria will grow in the accumulated urine. This is called the cystitis. And next, we will uh, continue this one as an infection is ascends, going to be increases to the renal pelvis. So, what will happen is the lead to the phylonephritis. So, what are the phylonephritis? This is going to be the renal medulla loss the ability of the concentrate or dilate the urine on long standing final effort is damage the renal interstitium and function loss of the nephron finally what happens is a chronic renal failure okay actually the once the cytitis has occurred it may it may remain the localized without ascending the kidney in some people bacteria may reach the renal pelvis because the pathological condition in which urine is a prepared up one or both of the ureter during the maturation reflex. So, uh, this condition is called as a vesicloureteral reflex and is due to the failure of the bladder wall uh, to occlude the ureter during the maturation. And some of the urine is prepared upward towards the kidney carrying with the bacteria that can reach the renal pelvis and renal medulla where they can initiate the infection and inflammation association with the phylonephritis. An important thing uh, with the long standing of the phylonephritis uh, like as invasion of the kidney by the bacteria not only causes of damage to the renal medulla interstitium but also result the progressive damage of the renal tubules a glomeruli and other structure of throughout the kidney. Now here is consequently large parts of the function renal tissue are lost and finally what will happen is a chronic renal failure can develop. So now we have to know about this one uh, acute as well as a chronic renal diseases. So we are going to move towards the signs and symptoms of the renal failure. So the oliguria and is the anuria which is a decreased amount of the urine excretions and due to the decrease of glomerulus infiltration rate and second thing is the generalized edema hypertension due to the salt and water retention and increase of plasma creatinine and urea and uric acids levels and metabolic acidosis due to the failure of excreted the hydrogen ions and anemia in chronic renal failure due to the decrease of erythro Poetin secretion and osteomalacia uh, is in the chronic renal failure. And next, uh, we are going to be move towards the artificial kidney. So, what is the artificial kidney? If there is a uh, renal failure, so what will happen? What is the next step? 
so we have to be make the artificial kidney so what is artificial kidney so artificial kidney means we are not fixing any kidney on that so artificial kidney means so what are the functioning is going on the kidney that is going to do by the machine for example i hope you already know about this the dialysis isn't it so uh, so what are the filtration be happen in the kidney that filtration happen in the machine so that is a artificial kidney or is called as a dialysis the main function of the kidney is to excrete the unwanted substances from the blood so due to the various cause of the kidney fails to excrete the unwanted substances urea uric acid creatinine cause uremia so finally it leads to the person to death because this unwanted substance is cleared by using the artificial kidney called as a dialysis now we have to know about the what is a dialysis dialysis is a procedure to remove the waste materials and toxic substances and to restore the normal volume and composition of the body free in several renal sorry in severe renal failure it is also what is a hemodialysis okay i have just mentioned about this one as to remove that one now this is a renal failure it may be acute or the chronic renal failure conditions in what are the conditions they have to do so in acidemia electrolyte abnormalities intoxication that is acute poisoning with the diazable substances overload of fluid not expected to respond to the treatment of the diuretics uremia complications such as a pericarditis encephalopathy and gi bleeding and next we are more towards the chronic indication for dialysis so chronic renal failure so because of the low glomerular filtration rate so 10 to 4 15 ml per minute in diabetes dialysis in the started earlier difficulty in medically controlling the fluid and overload serum potassium so in this way there is a chronic indication of the for dialysis and next we are going to see about the principle of the dialysis the basic principle of the dialysis is to clear unwanted substance from the blood through the semi permeable membrane by the process of diffusion as well as the ultra filtration so diffusion is the process which the movement of solutes from the region high concentration to in the lower concentration and in blood is unwanted substances like is urea uric acid creatinine have a high concentration that moves towards in the dialysis of through the semi permeable membrane and this are the uh, comparison of dialysis fluid the normal and uremic plasma this is a constituent this is the normal plasma as is the dialysis fluids and this is the uremic plasma next we are going to about this one so what are the types of dialysis one is a hemodialysis another one is a peritoneal dialysis what is a hemodialysis it is a medical procedure that uses a special machine to the filter waste products from the blood and to restore the normal constituent to you so hemodialysis was termed as a extra corporeal dialysis because it's performed outside the body and this is a dialysis machine so now we have to know about the frequency and duration of the dialysis the frequency and duration of the dialysis depends upon the severity of the renal dysfunction uh, dialysis is a done usually thrice in a week severe uremia each time the artificial kidney is used to used uh, for about 6 hours okay and and this is a uh, dialysis so the concentration of the various substances in the dialysate is the adjusted concordance with the needs of the patient's body the fluid does not contain urea urate sulfate phosphate and creatinine so that these substances move from the blood to the dialysate so therefore this dialysis they have to be filtered so the basic filter is going to here and after that they are going to be put to outside okay and uh, next we are move towards the peritoneal dialysis as a peritoneal dialysis is a technique which peritoneal membrane is used as a semi permeable membrane it also used as a treat the patient suffering from the renal failure a catheter is be inserted into the peritoneal cavity through the anterior abdominal wall and sutured 
the dialysate is a pass through the this catheter under gravity so the required electrolytes from the dialysate pass through the vascular peritoneum into the blood vessels of abdominal cavity urea creatinine phosphate and other unwanted substances diffused from the blood vessels into the dialysate and later on the dialysate is be drained from the peritoneal cavity by the gravity so what will happen the peritoneal dialysis is a simple convenient and less expensive technique compared to the hemodialysis so what will happen so it can be change the fluid on the outpatient basis so it few drawbacks it is less efficient in removing the some of the toxic substances and may lead to complication by the infection yeah this is the procedure for the doing the peritoneal dialysis and finally we have to know about this is the complication of the peritoneal dialysis of complication of the dialysis complication of dialysis depends upon the patient's condition age excess of the diseases other than renal failure and many other factors common complications of dialysis is individual having only a renal dysfunction or sleep disorders anxiety depressions and infections or catheter sites the uh, peritonitis or infection in the peritonitic cavity and peritonitis should be treated aggressively and there is hernia weight gain so these are the complications of peritoneal dialysis also and next we are going to see about the kidney transplantation the kidney transplantation or renal transplantation in the organ transplant of the kidney into the patient with the end stage of the kidney diseases isn't it so kidney transplant is a typically classified the diseased donor or living donor transplantation uh, depending on the source of the donor organ so now we have to know about this one there is a living donor kidney transplant for further characterized or genetically related and uh, non related living unrelated transplant depending on the whether the biological relationship exists the between the donor and recipient so what is the procedure in most cases the barely functioning existing kidney or not removed as removed has been shown to increase the rate of the surgical morbidity therefore the kidneys is usually placed in the location different from the original kidney often this is a iliac fossa so it is a often necessary to use the different blood supply okay the renal artery of the new kidney previously branched from the abdominal aorta in the donor is often connected towards the external iliac or drain the recipient the renal vein the of the new kidney previously draining into the inferior vena cava in the donor is often connected towards the external iliac vein in the recipient i hope you will be understand the classes so what is the renal disorders and what is the artificial kidney or is called the dialysis and what is the kidney transplantations so this is a three topic how you understand this topic have any doubts have any clarification this comment or text or you can ask okay so i hope you will be understand the classes again thank you students